representative here. His Excellency the Japanese Ambassador, country representatives of UNFPA, Chair of the Asian Population and Development Association, distinguished participants, the media, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure that we are meeting today at this very important function because we are reflecting on key issues that touch directly on our population and, and, and food safety in our various countries. But essentially because we are interacting from different backgrounds so we can come up with solid positions on how our various countries can tackle um, the question of food security, the question of population, the question of reproductive health in, in our various countries. Lots of efforts have gone into ensuring that this meeting comes out successfully. And even before I, we, we, we go on to end the program, I will first of all acknowledge the fact that the Speaker of Ghana's Parliament, especially the first Deputy Speaker, had been very committed in ensuring that this function comes off well. Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen, for us here in Ghana, this gathering is timely because it has come at a time we are discussing key issues on how policy can affect the limit of children, of families, how to ensure food security in our country, and finding ways of financing family planning and reproductive health in the face of dwindling national resources and funding from external, um, from, from other countries. However, it requires that we make some key policy choices, and that is very important for us. In the midst of the lack we face, and in the midst of the challenge of a new generation coming on, following directly be, be, be behind the present, we need to make strong decisions. We need to make decisions that can have lasting effects on our, on our populations. And so given the complexity of issues of population, food security, and sexual reproductive health and rights, we are looking at how parliamentarians can partner with multi-stakeholders to monitor and evaluate policy implementation. As a platform gives parliamentarians the opportunity to share expressions and experiences on ways to manage population and ensure food security, they use their deliberative powers, their powers of legislative uh, roles to influence policy decisions. And it is so important that population issues have engineered the need for us to have a population caucus in Ghana's parliament, and which I believe has uh, some effects in other countries as well. And so, Mr. Speaker, this is a very important um, conference, a summit, and we are happy to be with you, and we are welcoming you all to Ghana. Enjoy the Ghanaian hospitality. We hope that deliberations will produce the best of results, and in the end, we can have something firm holding on to that will have direct influence on the various policies we, we want to implement. So this is my way of welcoming you and hoping that we can interact more freely, we can share ideas more freely, we can eventually come out solidly with positions that can influence policy decisions in our various countries. I thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Rashid Purple, Dr. Rashid Purple. Um, the next speaker is Honorable Yukayo Ubukata, a member of the Japanese House of Representatives. He is a former journalist by profession. He has published 50 books, and he's a very active TV and radio presenter, and does other public relations activities. 
He's also a member of the Constitutional Democratic Party of Japan. Ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Ubukata. え、日本の衆議院議員の宇部方幸雄と申します。え、日本語で喋らせていただきますんでよろしくお願いします。え、ジョセスオサイオスガナ国民議会第一副議長アブドゥルランドハッサンヘルプオガナ人口開発議連議
人口問題が一人一人の人生に関わる問題であり、決して強制できる問題ではないという、その特性から、国民の代表である国会議員がその役割を果たさなければならない必然性があったためです。As you are aware, parliamentarians' activities for addressing international issues began when we started tackling the issue of population. Because the issue of population has bearing on the lives of individuals, we can never force solutions to this issue, this issue upon individuals. This makes it imperative for parliamentarians as representatives of the people to play a role. 国会議員活動にはその当初より2つの方向性がありました一つには持続可能な開発に関する国際的な考え方を国会議員を通じて国民に伝えるということこれに加え国民の理解を得て国際機関に対する支援を獲得するという役割も期待されていたと思います。From the outset, parliamentarians' activities were carried out in two directions. First, we need to communicate to the people the international concept of sustainable development. By extension, we are expected to play a role in gaining the understanding of the people to provide support for international organizations. もう一つは国民の声をその代表である国会議員を通じて政府や国際機関に伝えるというものです。これは声なき声であり、文化や伝統の中に埋もれている知恵を国際社会に反映させるという国会議員の活動でなければ実現できない役割と言えます。Second, parliamentarians need to be a vehicle through which the people's voice can be conveyed to the government and the international organizations. This role of listening to the silent majority and introducing traditional and cultural wisdom to the international community is something only parliamentarians can fulfill. この双方性からその当初より国会議員活動は国連機関と連携し協力しながらも独自性を持ち自らの責任と判断で実施していくという理念がありましたそのため日本から始まった議員活動は当初より各地域の独自性を尊重し各地域が自立して運営できるように支援してまいりました From both of the, these directions, parliamentarians have from the outset partnered and cooperated with UN organizations while maintaining our originality and promoting our activities at our own responsibility and judgment. For this reason, parliamentarian activities that began in Japan have consistently respected the originality of each country and region and have provided support to them. In ways that they can independently carry out their activities. 今回会談、会議を主催しているアプダは、このような国会議員活動を支援するために、法的根拠を持つ組織として設立されました。アプダ、the organizers of this conference was established as an organization having a legal foundation for supporting such parliamentarian activities. 今、2030アジェンダ。SDGs を達成するために国会議員の役割はかつてないほど大きく重要なものとなっています。SDGs を達成するためにはいかに私たちが代表する国民の知恵と知識を国際社会に反映させていくかというこの活動が本来持っていた役割が極めて重要なものとなります。Has never been more important. In achieving the SDGs, our role in introducing to the international community the wisdom and knowledge of the people we represent will be extremely important. So, we have to do this in the way we have to do this. We have to do this in the way we have to do this. We have to do this in the way we have to do this. 協議に反映されたことを反映されることを記念いたしております。For this reason, candid discussions we will have at this conference will have a significant meaning. I am convinced of the successful outcome of this conference and sincerely hope that our discussions will also be reflected 
on the international discussions at the next year's Tokyo's International Conference on African Development, or TCAT, and G20. えー、最後になりましたが、この貴重な機会をご提供くださいましたガーナ国会に心より感謝を申し述べたいと思います。ありがとうございました。Lastly, I'd like to express my sincere appreciation to the Parliament, Parliament of Ghana for granting us this valuable opportunity to hold this conference. Thank you very much. Another applause for Mr. Ubukata. Thank you. Now, the next、um, person to speak is Mr. Niyi Ujualo Lapi, country representative of the United Nations Fund for Population Agency. So we call on Mr. Niyi to give us his address. Thank you very much, MC. Once again, I've,、um, you, you, you wounded my name, but that is okay. I'm, I'm so used to that these days. <laughs> the name is Ni Oju Olakwe, and、um, I'd like to、um, acknowledge the, the importance of this, of this gathering. But before I just go into my speech, I'd like to welcome you all. I hope you're having a good time in Ghana. I, I'm also relatively new in the country. And, but I want to find out since the time you came,、uh, how many of you have had a reason to eat jollof rice? In my climbs, the issue of jollof rice, because I come from Nigeria, and、um, there is the issue of jollof rice between Ghana jollof and Nigerian jollof rice. So I'll be also be asking whenever, at the point at which you eat jollof rice, Which particular one did you eat? And then you declare judgment before you go at the end of the day. I believe that your host will provide you with jollof rice at the end of the day.、Um, I'd like to acknowledge the, the Speaker of Parliament, sir.、Um, thank you for coming.、Um, also, the Chair of the Parliamentary Caucus on Population and Development,、um, Prof, that I've just met, that I've just met this morning. Um, let me also acknowledge the president of the African Parliamentary、um, Forum on Population and Development,、um, whom I've just met also this morning, and I've had the privilege of sitting, sitting beside her.、Um, and every parliamentarian present, everybody present at this uh, particular um, auspicious occasion, I want to thank you for being here, and I say good morning to everybody. I'm very, very delighted to be here this morning. And it is indeed a great privilege and pleasure to see all of you from different countries and also for me to share with you some thoughts on the theme of this conference. Parliamentarians as the fourth pillar for achieving the 2030 agenda、um, population, food security, sexual and reproductive health. As many of you would know, wearing the cap that I wear and coming from UNFPA, I could not have been more excited by the theme of this conference. Powered by our mandate, UNFPA has a vital role to play in supporting countries to implement and achieve the sustainable development goals. And as you would know, It's music to my ears that we are here talking about,、um, we're we going to be talking about sexual and reproductive health issues and their interconnection, interlinkage with the issues of population and data for the development of the people, because that is the meat of our job. So, even though by the time I got the invite for this,、uh, for this conference, I already had a lot of commitments even outside town. But given the importance, That um, parliamentarians, um, that pa the importance of parliamentarians to the work that is being done, and also because of the topic on play, in play, I had to shelve every other appointment to make sure that I'm here. The SDGs is very important, it's at the core of the work of, you, of, the, work of the United Nations at this point in time. And the SDG cannot be achieved without the empowerment of women, girls, and young people to be able to make informed decisions. About their sexual and reproductive health. The theme, in essence, 
of this conference speaks to the population and its most existential needs, comprising food, reproductive health, and other similar issues for survival. And the sustainability of every country is in its human resource. And Africa, and including Ghana, currently has a large youth base. And to be able to gain economic freedom, there is a need for the continent to consciously invest in its human resources, especially the youth, which is its large, at largest asset. This cannot be achieved without filling the data gaps so that efforts can be directed towards those that are furthest behind. And they cannot be achieved without keeping human rights up front. While these are the core of UNFPA business, the organization sees a great role and open opportunity for advancing our work in all contexts, but with a renewed commitment in the light of the Sustainable Development Goals. Thus, for UNFPA, the 20 Agenda means doing things differently, but not necessarily doing different things. For Africa, we have what we call the Addis Ababa Declaration on Population and Development in Africa beyond 20, 2014. And let me give you a bit of background to it. With the ICPD, which I'm sure many of you are aware of, um, the ICPD conference that took place in Cairo in 1994, which is at the core or at the heart of the mandate of UNFPA and the agenda of UNFPA the world over, the ICPD conference um, put in place a situation whereby 20 years down the line, we're going to have a review. So 20 years after the ICPD in 1994, in 2014, we had a review. We had a review in different regions. And particularly, zeroing in down to Africa, there was a review of the advances of the, of the gains that have been made in the world subsequent to um, the ICPD conference in, two, in 1994. And in Africa, we had a review which took place in Addis Ababa. And after that entire process of the review, there was a conference that brought together member states. And member states decided that we had to do something more concrete so that the gains of the uh, ICPD conference can be taken forward. Therefore, and that was what led into what we call the Addis Ababa Declaration on Population and Development. So, and that particular, that particular declaration contains 88 commitments. 88 commitments that should define what the countries should be working together on in the next 20 years. But it also says that in five years' time, we'll be having a review of that declaration. So we have the Addis Ababa Declaration, which says in five years' time, let us also see how far we have gone. And therefore, this year, we're going to be having this conference in, uh, in Accra in October this year. Accra is also, again, proud to host a conference that will be talking about the gains that has been made or the progress that has been made in the last five years. So in October, we'll also be happy to welcome you all again to come here to Accra and let us see what we have done. Now, those 88 commitments, we want to see how far we have gone. What we have done, have we made any progress? Are there success stories? What are the gaps? What else do we need to do in order to get there faster? Those are the things that we'll be, those are the things that we'll be talking about. And but before then, we have also go, gone to every country to see what has happened. So there is a report for every country which um, UNFPA has been proud to support in every country in Africa. Now, the pillar two of that Addis Ababa Declaration, which is on health, contains 17 commitments. And those commitments, they address development challenges, including key issues such as universal access to sexual and reproductive health services, including maternal health care, skilled birth attendance, family planning, and the unmet needs, HIV, and sexually transmitted infections. It also contains um, commitment towards the issue of comprehensive sexuality education and equitable and universal access to health care and health system strengthening. So we have a lot of work on our hands because we need to address these issues. It's a commitment that has been freely made 
by African leaders, which we have identified that we need this in order to make our people better, in order to make better lives for our people. And I believe that all of us will be working towards that. Many of you are from countries whereby the demographic transition has occurred a long time ago. The transition has been predicted, and you work towards it to make sure that it is, uh, it is adequately utilized to take advantage of the opportunities inherent in the process in order to boost your socioeconomic um, transformation. But then in Africa, we are presently only at the early stages of the transformation. And that's why UNFA is again proud to have been the organization that worked with the African Union to say we have to take the issue of demographic transition very, very seriously. Because if we don't take it, if we don't take it very seriously, the demographic structure that we have can actually become a demographic problem, which can become a demographic bomb. But then, it was decided that if we look at the figures, if we study it properly, we can turn around that challenge into a bonus. So we have the opportunity of actually having a demographic dividend from what we currently have. Because what we currently have is that we have more young people that are a dependent part of the population. They are at the base. They have the highest number. They have the highest, the highest part of the population. I can freely tell you that 66% of the population of this country right now, they are 29 years and below. Most of them don't have jobs. They don't produce anything for the country. And therefore, they are dependent on a small portion, which is less than 30%, which are the working parts of the population. We can turn it around in such a way that we can have more people working for the population, and then we can have better prosperity. In a situation whereby we have more people working and virile and active, even if you have um, you have a demographic structure whereby we have a, an economic structure that is doing very, very well. If you have too much people that are not contributing to the economy, then it is, we'll be operating suboptimally. But we can turn this around, and that's why that's the essence of demographic dividend. UNFPA is proud to have been the organization that worked with the African Union, along with some other partners, of course, to ensure that the issue of demographic dividend is given its pride of place in our affairs. And then we work towards it a year, about two years. We work with the African Union to the point where by in 2016, at um, Addis Ababa, when, we had the Addis Ababa when, we, when they had the African Union summit, there was a declaration that that year was going, I mean 2017, that that year was going to be the year of demographic dividend, I mean, transiting, I mean, getting Africa to achieve the demographic dividend through investment in youth. It was declared at the, at the OAU summit. And at this point, I want, to, I want to acknowledge the efforts and the, and the, and the passion and commitment of our former executive director, Professor Babatunde Oshotime, who has transited, who, I mean, he passed last year. In that particular conference, the president of the African Union at that point alluded to the work that UNFP has done, and he particularly was singled out for mention for the efforts that he made, that he made to get us to that point where we had that um, declaration. I pray that his soul will continue to um, rest in peace. The point I'm making is this that UNFPA since 2013 up to this point in time, we have provided leadership to African countries on how they could earn the demographic dividend. And that is the essence of um, the work that you are doing. And I want to also acknowledge your, um, your passion and commitment in being at this place at this point in time. The African Union, in collaboration with UNFPA, developed, that, developed a roadmap from that point, and that roadmap, we've been working on it trying to educate countries on what we need to do in order to enable us to achieve the demographic dividend. And it was launched last year by member countries. In Ghana here, we launched us in the roadmap towards achieving demographic dividend. And UNFPA in every country in Africa, we are working with governments, we are working with all partners to ensure that we can get to the point whereby we can annex the demographic dividend. I also want to, I also want to say that when properly catered for, and prepared. We have young people, we create a new and innovative environment. As young people are very, very adventurous, they are very, very creative, 
they have strength, they have energy, and if all of that is put to use, our countries will be better. In countries whereby they have achieved the demographic transition, it's as a result of the fact that they've been able to put the efforts and the power of youth, they've been able to put it together to achieve um, what they're achieving. So it is strategic that Africa seriously taps into the potential of the youth. I want to, write, to reiterate what our former executive director said when he visited Ghana here in 2016. He said, African countries should not do anything without the youth. Illustrating in terms of um, sexual and reproductive health issues, he revealed that adolescent girls have the highest prevalence of unwanted pregnancies, which oftentimes create barriers for them to achieve their full potentials as they are affected negatively by so many issues. Let me bring again to your attention the story of a cousin of mine when we were growing up. We were in secondary school, we were around the age of 12, 13. We were in secondary school, she was a very, very smart girl. Very, very, very smart girl. She was more, she was smarter than myself and those of us that were peers at that point in time. But things happened. She got pregnant. The point at which she got pregnant, the story changed. The course of her life changed. Because in a short while, she had to be thrown out of school. She was thrown out of school. The shame and the odium that surrounded the fact that she was a young girl that got pregnant, she had to be taken away from the town where we were living. She was sent to the village. A couple of months thereafter, when she put to bed, she could not take care of herself. She could not take care of the child. So it was a child having a child. And therefore, if you look back today, so she could not go to school. It ended, she had to end up on the, on the farm, farming. And, doing, and then over time, even at this point in time, after so many years, it is difficult for her to relate with those of us that we went to school and we came out of it and we are, so to say, doing well. But this was somebody whose, if her potentials were adequately harnessed, she would have become a star. But then the reverse has been the case. So that is the case for what I would call the 10-year-old girl. We need to begin to look at a typical 10-year-old girl in our climbs, in everywhere we are at this point in time, because the 10-year-old girl add 15 years to her years. What will happen to her? When you look at the 10-year-old girl, how would you make her better in 15 years' time? In year 2030, when we're going to be having um, the SDGs, when we're going to be looking at the SDG review again, what will happen? Now, at this point in time, we need everybody, everybody around us, we need to look around us, us and look at the 10-year-old girl. You need to give them the appropriate education. Make sure that they go to school. Make sure that they, even though we might say, oh, nobody wants to talk about sex, you need to give them comprehensive sexuality education so that they can prevent rape, so that you can prevent teenage pregnancy, you can prevent them going out of school and not achieving their full potentials. It's a task that every one of us must look after, and I want to say that I want to commend it to you. Please just look around you. If you see a girl, if you educate a girl, you are educating a nation. If you develop a girl, you are already developing a nation. Dear Honorable MPs, let me begin to end by saying, currently we have what we call the UN Youth Strategy. The UN Youth Strategy has just been approved. We are going to be sharing it very soon. It gives us very, very, very clear guidance on what we need to do in order to harness the, um, the, the power of a very, very young person and also especially for that of, the, for, for that of girls. Parliamentarians, as the fourth pillar, have overarching oversight on the achievement of all our SDGs. And to me, population, food security, sexual and reproductive health have been focused by, by, for you and for the purpose of this conference, since as legislators you will see to it that all laws are turned into policies, programs and strategies for which you have the final say. And this is not the hand, you are also empowered to apprise the effectiveness of implementation, especially by government. In our different parliaments, I want to commend to us that please, please work as much as possible. I will soon finish. 
work as much as possible to advance the work that we are doing, especially in terms of population and food security and the issue of data, bringing data together to provide evidence so that you can, so that the work that you are doing can be, can be, uh, can be honest properly. I want to acknowledge particularly the Japanese government at this juncture. The Japanese government, they have been a big um, supporter for what we do in UNFPA at the global stage. But the Japanese government would not, would not be able to do what they are doing if the Japanese parliament is not supportive. But the Japanese parliament will not even be able to know what needs to be done, especially for UNFPA, if we don't have a particular caucus among them that speaks to the issues of population and development. So let me acknowledge uh, the, our Japanese friends for what they continue to do how they continue to support us, and we are very, very, we are very, very grateful for that. And I'd like to, by that, make a case for Japanese support for what we do here in Ghana. Uh, particularly in Ghana, we, we expect support directly from the Japanese government, from JICA, to do what we're doing. You might not be able to say we are building houses, but we are building people. We are building the young girl so that they will be in a particular position whereby they will be able to contribute um, to, to national development. I also want to acknowledge the Parliament of Ghana. The Parliament of Ghana has been very, very supportive to the UNFP agenda. And um, in everything, it's because we have the Parliament that we can see votes being put into the things that we do. So, Honorable Speaker, please, I want to thank you on behalf of the Ghanaian Parliament for the support that we have. And to conclude, I have no doubt that by the end of this conference, you would have shared many experiences from your vast and varied background in the form of good practices and lessons learned. Please remember that UNFPA is always available to collaborate and partner with you. We welcome your individual and collective supra-partisan actions to address population issues in such a way that every pregnancy is wanted, every child birth is safe, and that every young person's potential is fulfilled. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much once again, Mr. Ojul Lakbe. Um, our next speaker is Madam, Honorable Madam Mary Rose Nguiji Efa of Cameroon. No. Thank you. Um, Mr. Speaker, Joseph Oseousi. Um, my dear friend, Abdullah Ashid, as an chair of Parliamentary and Caucus on Population and Development, Honorable Yuko Ubukata, Japan NP, um, Mr. Lucien Kwaku, Director of IPPF Africa Region, Mr. Niyi Ojulape, Country Representative, and Honorable Arun Adrisu, <laughs> distinguished English, Honorable Fellow Parliamentarian, dear Parliamentarian. It's a great honor for me today to take part in this event on behalf of African Parliamentarian Forum of Population and Development and our delegation with gathering members of Parliament from countries across Africa and Asia. I would like to first of all express my deep appreciation and gratitude to your host and organizer. What unites us as parliamentarians is an unshakable belief of potential of a world with zero human needs for family planning, zero maternal death, and zero violence and harmful practice against women and girls. As lawmaker, you have a responsibility to do everything to make this possible. Over the course of this visit, we will be benefit from thematic session interaction with key leaders delivering from women and girls and presentation of successful legislative and funding initiative for parliamentarian champions. Each parliamentarian meeting I attend make me a better advocate for a comprehensive human rights approach for the, uh, to the sustainable development and I'm absolutely sure that this forum will be the same. 
let us take the promise of new connection, new notch less, a deep net understand of step further. We need to think collectively to exchange and to talk to each other about how what we have seen and learned in Ghana will help us and parliamentarians across national and political boundaries to deliver real change after we come back home. The population and development agenda is a broad one. As parliamentarians, we also have our own, our own platform, an issue that we are pushing, but we have an extremely important role to play, even more so since the adoption of 20, the 2030 agenda to ensure that the rights of women and girls are guaranteed. For the first time, Parliament have been highlighted in the SDGs for their role in the enact, enactment of, legislative, of legislation and adoption of budget in assuring accountability for the effective implementation of our commitment. Parliament must now make the ICPD program of action to 2030 agenda and the African Union 2060 agenda central to their work on population and development in the national policy dialogues. Everything is urgent and you must address many issues regarding family planning, maternal health, traditional harmful practices, including female genital manipulation and child early and forced marriage. One of the main challenges facing Africa today is the imperative to empower its larger over young population and to provide them with opportunity to realize their full potential. This call for crucial and sustainable investment to young people need their health care, <coughs> their education, and of course, ensuring that they have access to modern contraception to allow them to take charge of their own futures. Millions of women, girls worldwide see their dreams, ambition, and plans shattered simply because they are girls. Working together, you can help deliver a world where every pregnancy is wanting, every birth is safe, and every young person potential is fruitfully. A world free of violence and discrimination, where human rights are respected and people's diversity is celebrated. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, madam. Mm -hmm. Now, then we are gradually we are coming to the end of the opening session. And before we do that, I would like to introduce the first deputy speaker, who is to give us the, a keynote address as regards this opening session. So the first deputy speaker, who is currently serving his first third term as a member of parliament in Ghana, in Ghana. Um, is, is joined the parliament in 2008, and he was elected first deputy speaker in 2017. Um, he's a lawyer by profession and represents the people of Bekwai in the Ashanti region. Ladies and gentlemen, I call on Honorable Joseph Fosse Wusu, first deputy speaker of Ghana's parliament, to address you. Thank you. This is a very difficult time for me. Practically all the leaders of parliament are out of town, so I have to be representing parliament at many okay, um, programs today, this morning. So forgive me if I leave you as soon as I'm done with my opening remarks. Colleague members of parliament from Africa, colleague members of parliament from Asia, his Excellency the Japanese Ambassador to Ghana, the resident representative of ENFPA, distinguished guests, the media, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. It is my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of Mr. Speaker of the Parliament of Ghana, the Right Honorable Aaron Michael Quay, Quay to this historic moment of the 28, 2018 Conference of the Asian and African Parliamentarians Project here in Accra. This is the first time the Parliament of Ghana is hosting such a project, and Ghana is grateful to have this opportunity to promote South-South cooperation on issues relating to population, food security, 
and sexual reproductive health. I wish to highly commend the organizers, Asian Population and Development Association, for putting together such an important program. The theme for this year's conference, Parliamentarians, as the fourth pillar for achieving the 2030 Agenda, Population, Food Security, and Sexual Reproductive Health, is appropriate as issues of population and development have emerged as key elements to the advancement of society. And of members, ladies and gentlemen, it is worthy of note that as at the end of 2015, a number of developing countries had made significant strides towards the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals. Some African countries, including Ghana, were able to reduce extreme poverty and hunger, HIV AIDS prevalence rate, and mother-to-child transmission. In spite of the modest achievements, challenges such as maternal and infant mortality, drought and climate change affecting food security, discrimination against the poor and the disadvantage in society, and the inequality between the rural and urban population are still of grave concern. To build on the gains of the MDGs, heads of state at the summit in 2015 adopted the Agenda 2030 for sustainable development. I am optimistic that discussions at this conference will enable us to devise strategies towards achieving the objectives outlined in Agenda 2030, particularly the goals two and three, which are the main focus of these deliberations. Wild Goal 2 aims to end hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition, as well as promote sustainable agriculture. Goal 3 has the objective of to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. Ladies and gentlemen, as you deliberate on the various issues, I would urge that you also pay attention to the female empowerment issues. This is important in view of the fact that women and girls who constitute more than 50% of the population of most developing nations are often left behind in the social, economic, and political discourse of these countries. Prioritizing female empowerment to a large extent would ensure that targets set for Agenda 2030 for the Sustainable Development Goals are met. Studies indicate that increasing the female education population particularly to the highest level, reduces the birth rate, lower maternal and child mortality, and improves the lives of families. Also, the NDP 2016 African Development Report estimated that women participation in African labor market would accrue $95 billion per year. Consequently, it would be useful to deliberate on how to leverage on your role as MPs to empower women and girls to adequately participate in the national development. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, another issue worthy of concern is the high rate of youth unemployment in Africa. Africa as a continent has a population of about 1.3 billion. The youth in Africa who are between the ages of 15 to 24 constitute about 19% of the African population. However, this relatively large population of the youth has not translated into the desirable economic benefits, including employment generation and wealth creation. The relatively large youthful population, Africa stands the potential to enjoy a rapid economic growth, growth if its human resource is effectively harnessed. Honorable members, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the availability of reliable data for the effective monitoring of the progress of sustainable development goals cannot be overemphasized. To bridge the current data gap, there is a need for institutions, including Parliament, to be adequately resourced to build its human resource capacity and institutional architecture. This would enhance data collection and processing in a timely manner to facilitate the effective monitoring and evaluation of the SDGs. Together, we must continue the transformation of our parliaments and ensure that it remains relevant in the midst of the challenges that confront us. 
it is my hope that at the end of this conference, we would be equipped with the necessary tools that will enable our parliaments to pursue its rules effectively and efficiently. I therefore encourage members to fully participate in this conference and wish you a pleasant day. On this note, I declare the conference formally opened. I thank you for your attention. Okay, here, here comes the end of the first session. We will proceed outside to the garden area for photograph session. And then we will also use the same period to have our coffee break. And then we will return to this same hall to continue with the actual program. That's just, this could take about 15, 20 minutes. So ladies and gentlemen, let, let us proceed to the garden area for the photograph session. <laughs>